Hi, my name is Samantha Russell, and I am a teaching artist for Arts Council OKC. And I am just recording this video to talk to you all a little bit about um, my experience as a dancer and as a dance teacher, um, what my journey with dance has been like thus far, and what I do exactly for Arts Council as a dance teacher teaching in the public schools, and also what my plan is for this time that we're in with COVID-19 and how I'm planning on approaching my classes during this time period. So, um, a little bit about me. I started dancing when I was three and I wasn't, my mom didn't plan to start me that early with dance, but I always tell this story. Um, my sister, I think, was six at the time and my mom wanted to put my sister in dance and she, um, took me and my sister to the dance studio for my sister's first class. And the dance studio owner, Miss Tracy, was my first dance teacher, told my mom, um, you know, there's a class for three-year-olds happening at the same time um, as the class for a six-year-old, so you could put your younger daughter in dance too if you wanted. And my mom was like, well, then I won't have to keep up with my three-year-old in the lobby. <laughs> so she put me in um, dance class at three just to get rid of me for a little while. Um, but yeah, so I started at three and I missed my first dance recital because I was sick with chicken pox. So I didn't get to go to my first dance recital. That's something I always tell people too. Um, and then from there on, I just kept dancing. I danced with Miss Tracy at Terp Sickery Dance Center. Shout out to Terp Sickery if they ever see this. Um, I danced with them until I think I was eight or nine, and I did ballet and tap. And um, then when I was nine, I moved with my family to Mississippi for my dad's work. We were in Massachusetts at the time, and then we moved from Massachusetts to Mississippi, which was a huge culture shock. Um, but we moved in October, I believe, and uh, my mom put me in dance classes as soon as we got to Mississippi. Um, to kind of acclimate me and give me um, somewhere to make some new friends. Um, so then I started taking dance from Miss Susan at Dance Movements by Miss Susan, and I danced with her for four years, and I did, again, ballet and tap and jazz. I started doing jazz when I got a little bit older, and then when I turned 12, I had a huge growth spurt. I'm very tall. I'm 5'10". Um, and I had a huge growth spurt the summer before my 12th birthday, I believe. Um, and I grew, and um, when I grew and had the growth spurt, I lost a lot of flexibility. I was never like the most flexible um, kid in class to begin with. And then when I had my growth spurt, I got even more unflexible. Um, tight is what we call it. <laughs> um, but after that happened, I started being very self-conscious because I was so much taller than all the other uh, kids in my classes, and I wasn't able to do some of the things that they were able to do, like going into my splits and being able to hold my leg above my head and those kinds of things. I got really self-conscious and just kind of depressed about it, and I told my mom I wanted to quit. My mom, God bless her, um, told me, don't quit, at least keep taking tap because you're still really good at tap. <laughs> She's like, at least you can still tap. <laughs> Because tap is mostly just footwork anyway. Um, so I, she convinced me to keep doing tap, and so I actually went to another studio to do just tap because um, the studio I was at, you were required to take ballet in order to take any other genre. So if you wanted to take jazz, you had to take ballet first, and then you could add jazz on. And if you wanted to take tap, you had to already be taking ballet and jazz. That was just kind of how the setup was to keep enrollment high for the studio and also because it was a ballet based studio so they um, believed at that studio that ballet was the foundation of all other dance styles which is still um, still something that is believed for some studios and other studios they don't um, adhere to that so much anymore. Um, but anyway, so I had to leave that studio to go um, take just tap so I went and started taking dance from Miss Becky at Great Beginnings, shout out to Miss Becky, and I took tap 
just tap for two years, um, and I enjoyed it a lot. And then after I have been taking tap for two years, and it's up like, oh, uh, 12, 13, maybe 14, like maybe I was about to turn 14, um, my cousin invited me to go to a dance convention with her. If you don't know what a dance convention is, it's basically where you go and you do nothing but take dance classes for like three days straight. Um, and I was like, oh, I don't know if I could do that. I, I haven't really been dancing that much anymore. And she's like, oh, come, it'll be fun. And I, I loved my cousins growing up. So anytime that I got to go with them was a fun time. Um, so I went and I did the convention. It's called Dance Revolution. It's in Dallas, Texas. Um, I went and did that um, intensive or convention. I believe it was called an intensive. It was usually longer than three days in conventions. They're usually narrowed down to a weekend. Um, I did that convention. And when I came home, I was like, on fire for dance. I don't know what happened that, uh, that weekend that just like totally um, changed my perspective on dance and my passion for it, but I came home and I was like, Mom, I love dance. Dance is all I want to do. I want to dance as much as I can. And somehow, another studio during that time had just opened called Rejoice Dance Academy. Um, and it was owned by a wonderful lady named Miss Christie, and Miss Christie um, took me on as one of her first students. She, they had just opened up. Me and my older sister were one of some of her first students, and she worked with me and got me um, up to up to snuff. <laughs> she got me back where I needed to be um, as a 14-year-old coming back to ballet after being out of it for two to three years. Um, and so Miss Christie was. Uh, a huge was a huge impact on my dance education growing up, um, along with Miss Kelly, who also taught for Miss Christie. She was a professional ballerina with a company in Jackson, Mississippi. Um, the company is called Ballet Magnificat, and uh, Miss Christie would pay Miss Kelly to come in. She would drive an hour and a half from Jackson all the way to this tiny town called Macomb, Mississippi. She would drive from Jackson to Macomb one night a week. And she would teach us for like two or three hours, um, just the most advanced students at the studio. And she would teach us ballet, and she taught us jazz, and she was amazing. I loved her so much. I just remember as like a 15-year-old, like watching Miss Kelly and being like, oh, I just want to move like Miss Kelly. So shout out to Miss Kelly. If you ever see this, I have so many dance teachers who have made such a big impact on my life. Um, but yeah, so I had Miss Kelly and Miss Christie until I graduated high school. And it was my junior year of high school when one of my other cousins um, invited me to go to a, uh, it was like a high school arts day at a college. And she was, my cousin was attending the high school arts day, but she was doing the theater track because she was a senior in high school and she was interested in majoring in theater. Um, and so she called me and was like, hey, you should do this with me. Um, you can do the dance track and I'll do the theater track and we can get a hotel and our moms can hang out while we do it and then we can have fun at the hotel or whatever. And I was like, yeah, sure, that sounds good. And at this point I like was so into dance. So anything that was like, hey, you could come do this, you can dance, I was like all in. And so I was like, yeah, I'll do that. Come and dance all day for, um, for I don't remember how much it was, some like very small enrollment fee. Um, so I went and I did that at Bellhaven University. It was also in Jackson, Mississippi. Jackson was like the biggest city um, closest to my hometown, which is Macomb, Mississippi. Um, so I went and did that, and it was all day. And I went and had dinner with my mom and my cousin and her mom, and I told my mom, I was like, Mom, this is what I wanna do. I, I wanna major in dance, I wanna go to college, and I wanna dance, all these kids do all day is dance, they're just in their leotards all day long and that's all they do and that's what I want to do. And I was like, from that moment on, I was like, this is, this is like, this is, this is something I want to do. I'm, I'm all about it. Up until that point, I don't think I really had a clear picture of like, I love dance, but I was like, in the back of my head, I was kind of thinking, you know, well, I'm going to enjoy this for as long as I can, but thinking the cutoff date was probably going to be um, when I graduated high school just because I didn't know anyone at that point in my life who had danced further than that. Um, and so, oh, let me check my screen. It just went dark. Make sure I'm still recording. <laughs> you might get to edit this part out. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. <laughs> um, so I, 
told my mom after that day, I was like, Mom, I want to major in dance. And she was like, are you sure? Um, cause she was a physical therapist and my dad's a chemical engineer. So they're very educated, smart people who had very stable careers. And they were like, oh, our daughter wants to be a dancer, really? <laughs> but my parents have always um, supported me. Um, they've always supported my passions and um, uh, I don't, I don't know. They, they just always instilled this like, you can do, you can do whatever you want if you're willing to work hard enough kind of attitude, and um, that was really helpful for me going into the audition process to get into a dance program because you do have to audition. Um, I auditioned at two different schools, Bellhaven University and the University of Southern Mississippi, which is a state school. Um, there are the two dance. There are two colleges in Mississippi who both have uh, a bachelor's degree of fine arts um, in dance. And the uh, University of Southern Mississippi also offers um, an education track. So if you want to um, become a dance educator and teach in the public schools, you can do your um, BFA in dance education, which is, which is really cool. Um, so I ended up going to the University of Southern Mississippi because Bellhaven is private and way too expensive, <laughs> but um, I loved my time at the University of Southern Mississippi. I learned so much, and it was like so eye-opening for me, and a transformative time in my life, both as a dancer and just as a human, as an artist, and I, I just really, it was, not all, I don't recommend that all dancers do higher education it's not necessarily the only path for dancers but for me it was a perfect fit and um, I definitely don't regret my time there and I had so many amazing mentors um, so many amazing teachers and so many amazing um, fellow students in the program with me that were so inspiring to me um, and it's just so cool to keep up with them and see them on social media still like we're, we're still doing the thing, you know. We, I've been gra I graduated in 2016, so coming up on like four, almost five years that I've been graduated and like getting on Facebook or Instagram and being like, oh, you, we're still doing it. We're still dancing is so, it's so fun for me. Um, I, my class is really close like that. Um, let's see. Okay, so that's my education in dance all the way up to a bachelor's of fine arts. I did not do the education track. I ended up doing uh, performance and choreography because I love to choreograph. It's my all-time favorite thing, but I'm also very passionate about education. Um, and I, um, I'm, cur I'm currently doing more education-based work than choreography-based work, but um, it was still, I feel like my um, degree in performance and choreography still prepared me well to do education. So I'm content with what I have, <laughs> with the education that I got. Um, how did I get out to Oklahoma? Ah, uh, well, social media is such a fun thing. Um, I, my aunt or a family member sent me this post about this dance company in, o in Edmond, Oklahoma. Um, it's a Christian dance company called Arrows International, and they train year-round, but in the summer times they'll do um, short-term training sessions where you come and you train with Arrows, with the um, directors, Jeff and Allie Lewis. You train with them for 10 days, two weeks, um, and you learn tons of repertoire, tons of dances and choreography, and then you travel to another country. We traveled to Costa Rica and Panama, and we use the, we use the dances that we learned as a form of outreach in the streets and in the schools and um, in churches and oh gosh at a train station we danced so many places it was the coolest experience um, and I was a junior in college at the time when I did this and so after the trip was over and we had come back from Panama and we were, I was getting ready to go back home to Mississippi and start my senior year of college um, Jeff and Natalie were talking to us and talking to me and we're saying you know, we want to do this full time. We want a company that trains year round. At this time, they weren't training year round. At this time, they were only doing summer teams. Um, and they were like, we want to do this year round. So after you graduate college, you know, reconnect with us. Um, we would love to work with you again. 
kind of thing. And I was like, yeah, that would be amazing. Um, we'll see. But at the time, you know, I was going into my senior year, so I was like, who knows what's going to happen. Um, but then end of senior year rolls around, and that is still kind of just on my heart as the thing that I wanted to do. And so all my other friends, or not all of my friends, but a lot of my friends, um, getting ready to graduate were like, you know, I'm going to New York. I'm going to Chicago, I'm going to Florida, I'm going to dance at Disney World in Orlando. And everyone's like, Samantha, where are you going? And I was like, I'm going to Edmond, Oklahoma. <laughs> um, but I do not regret one second of it. It has been the wildest journey. It was the wildest journey. I danced with Arrows for a full year, and it is what got me to Oklahoma in the first place. And so I... Um, Oh, definitely a huge, huge gratitude for, for getting me out here because when I was coming out here, um, I was telling everybody, like, yeah, there's this dance company I really want to work with. I'm not like that excited about being in Oklahoma, but uh, I'm just really, I just want to dance there, so I'm going to put up with like living in Oklahoma. But <laughs> Oklahoma grows on you in strange ways. <laughs> um, I ended up loving it here. It was just like the perfect vibe for me because I'm from a small town. I just like, I've been to New York City and I've been to Chicago and I've been to LA and it's just, I just could never see myself living there. But I love OKC and the um, surrounding area just because it is so fresh. It's so new. There's so many things that are just like coming up that have, haven't been here and now it's like the Wild West. That's what I told my mom. I was like, it really is like the Wild West out here because new things are just happening all the time. And I love that, like, I get to be a part of these new things. Um, and uh, that's why I ended up staying. I ended up leaving Eros because I wanted to pursue uh, teaching full time, and the, ske the rehearsal schedule for Eros is not is not conducive to do that. So I ended up having to leave Eros, which was fine, no hard feelings there. And I started teaching full time, and eventually, again through Facebook, I uh, was connected with Arts Council, um, a girl that I knew on Facebook. Uh, shared in a group like hey this this organization is needing a teacher because I'm leaving to move to Dallas so if you're interested contact them and at the time I had a lot of availability during the day because my evenings were full teaching at studios but I didn't have anything going on during the day um, so I contacted Jill Coker at Arts Council at OKC, and I was like, hey, this girl, Allison Downs, says that y'all need an instructor for public schools, and so I started my first year teaching at OKC, um, where was it, Kip Preparatory Schools. I taught two hours there once a week, and it was middle school, and I did mostly jazz, and it was hugely, it was a huge learning curve for me um, to go from teaching exclusively in studios to teaching in a public school system. But um, Jill was super supportive. Uh, everyone at the uh, Arts Council was super supportive and they helped me kind of navigate the transition of, of going from studio to public schools. And then the next year, Jill um, contacted me again and said, hey, we want you to come back and teach for us again, but this time, um, would you be interested in teaching at elementary school and would you be interested in more hours teaching two days a week um, for the entire school day. And I was like, yes, I would love that because I love, I have such a passion for the younger kids. I love, I love working with the babies. Um, and so that is what I've been doing for this past year is teaching at Shadler Elementary. Um, I teach Wednesdays and Thursdays and I teach from 8 a.m. until 2.30. And I teach all ages. We teach pre-K all the way through fourth grade. Um, I have six different classes, so a pre-K class, kindergarten, first, second, third, and fourth. Um, and I teach uh, those grades on Wednesday, and then I turn around and teach those grades again on Thursday, but a different class, so all new kids coming in. Um, so through that program, uh, we are reaching probably about 100 students at Scheidler Elementary. Um, and that's what I've been doing this entire school year. We did ballet first. Our first semester was ballet, and then we started working on jazz, and we had a Christmas performance that was all jazz dance, and it went so, so well. I was so proud of the students and how hard they worked. Um, and then this past, oh, my phone's again. 
<laughs> this is gonna be so fun to edit. <laughs> uh, there we go. Let me check my time too. There we go. Um, and so, gosh, where was I? Oh, so we were doing jazz right before Christmas, and so our Christmas performance was all jazz dance, and I was so proud of the students. They worked so hard, and they did amazing, and then we came back after our winter break and started working on tap, which has been very interesting. The, the stu I can see the students learning. They've learned so much about rhythm and so much about coordination and weight changes, um, and the history of tap has been super interesting to go through with them. Um, and we did tap all the way up through spring break. And after spring break, we were supposed to come back and learn our hip hop uh, section, or I've been calling them blocks. We were about to start our hip hop block. And they were so excited. They've been waiting all year for the hip hop, hip -hop block. That's fun to say. Um, they've been waiting all year for it. And then over spring break, even a little bit before spring break, this thing called COVID-19 pops up and kind of throws a kink in our plans. And so here I am now, I'm still teaching for Arts Council OKC, but now instead of going into the schools, our game plan is to record dance videos through YouTube that we can upload and send the link to all students at Shidler Elementary. So that is one thing I am excited about with this change um, is uh, going from working with my hundred students or so and expanding that opportunity to experience dance, expanding that opportunity for any student who is um, a, a student at Shidler Elementary. Um, so if you're a pre-K student, I'll be sending you a pre-K dance video that you can watch and follow along with from home. Um, if you're in first grade, I'll be sending a first grade dance video that you can watch and follow along with from home. So just the fact that the numbers, of, the number of students that will be served and reached through dance through this um, experience is going to be so much more amplified, and I think that's really cool. So I'm really, I am really excited about that aspect. I'm nervous because I'm not a YouTube star. I'm not used to being in front of the camera. <laughs> But we're going to work through it, and uh, I, I'm really hopeful. I think the kids are really going to enjoy it. And I think it's really cool because it's something that um, maybe, hopefully, is something that they can involve their families in. So maybe their parents can watch or take class with them, their siblings, um, make it a family event, uh, something that can bond uh, families during this time, and just anything to keep their bodies moving. Um, just so if, if you have a a range of motion that you're used to meeting. I've been telling this to my older girls that I teach um, at my dance studio. If you have a range of motion that you're used to meeting every day, and for dancers that range of motion is much greater than the average average human, <laughs> average citizen. Um, if you're not meeting that range of motion every day, like it really does affect your body. So I am um, excited for how these videos are going to uh, just positively affect my students. Phys their physical being as well as their mental and emotional, just the, them being able to see my face. And I wish I could see theirs, but um, at least having that one-way communication is um, just something that they can look forward to uh, in the weeks to come. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit in the few minutes I have left about my uh, lesson plans that I have. Um, where I'm anticipating that this will probably last until the end of the school year, so I'm thinking I'll probably be doing my entire um, hip hop block on video. So I, well, for my older kids especially, for my younger kids, it's a lot of creative movement anyway. Um, so their their class structure does not change so drastically as say my second, third, and fourth graders, but my younger ones. Their class structure changes slightly, but not as much, because consistency is key when you're working with a five-year-old. <laughs> um, but for my older kids, I'm excited to be teaching them some basic pop rocks, which are just any any standing repetitive movement that has a groove to it. I have several pop rocks that I'll be teaching them. 
it's a, a little bit of breaking, a little bit of floor work that I'm hoping to teach them. Um, some freezes, that's where you get to balance on in, in any, you get to freeze in any um, position that is atypical. <laughs> so you can freeze on your head, you can freeze on two hands, you can freeze on a knee and a head, you can freeze um, just anytime you see b-boys breaking and then they stop moving and they're holding these like crazy extreme positions, that's a freeze. Um, I'm definitely not <laughs> The most, hip hop is, is one of my, I've mostly done ballet and jazz, but I am excited, I know enough about hip hop to give them a good foundation and something I was um, hoping to do, which maybe I can still work that out, is get um, some of my friends who are phenomenal hip hop dancers, get them involved in this video process and maybe see if we can get them on board, maybe get them, I'm talking out loud as I say this, so I feel, I'm sorry, it, uh, you can cut this part out, but maybe get them involved, maybe have them come up for a couple of videos so they can show the kids some cool stuff too. Um, for my younger ones, I am leaning towards, because I'd like um, to have something that's, something that's changing every week for them so that they're not getting the exact same video uploaded every week. Um, so I'm thinking something that I would like to do for my pre-K students and my kindergarten students, and maybe my first grade students, we'll see, um, is have story time at the beginning of the dance video. Um, I've grabbed one that I know I want to use, and it's called Olivia Dances for Joy. If you've ever um, worked with kids, you probably know who Olivia is, but she's this really fabulous little pig who goes on adventures, and there's a book about her dancing. So I'm interested in how I can format the lesson plan where I start off the video with story time with the dancers and I'll read the story and in this story Olivia um, is talking about how everyone has a happy dance. So then from there the lesson plan would evolve into what does your happy dance look like, this is what my happy dance looks like, let's wear in a happy dance together. Um, they also talk about uh, having a dance contest, so what does a dance contest look like. Who can have the best, who can have the best plie, who can have the best tendu, who can have the best jazz hands, um, and so on and so forth from there. I have a set warm-up that I usually do with them, but I, was, I am interested in challenging myself as an educator, um, and challenging myself to provide a theme each week for um, these students for these videos that they're going to be watching. So that is something that I am working on currently for my pre-K, kindergarten, possibly first grade, and then first, second, third, and fourth. I'm just going to teach them as much hip hop as I can through a video. And maybe, hopefully, bring in some guest teachers too. We'll see if that is something that can work out. Um, yeah, and I am currently sitting in a dance studio. This is Ascend Dance Studios, and the owner of Ascend Dance Studios, Jesse Gazelle, is my boss, and I teach here every night of the week, basically. I'm, if I'm not at Shadler Elementary, I'm here teaching. And she has been kind enough to offer her space up to me to film videos in. So when I'm filming these videos, I will be filming in a dance studio, which I think is gonna be cool for the kids, because they, um, I talked to them about what a dance studio looks like, but they, some of them have, have not seen it because we usually have class in either the foyer of the elementary school or we have class on a small stage in the um, auditorium slash cafeteria. Um, so I'm excited to show the kids around the space and let them see the other place that I work at that I talk about sometimes <laughs> when I'm teaching them. Um, let's see, I think that is pretty much all I was going to talk about, but anyways, I'm so thankful to Arts Council for allowing me to, con to continue, I'm so thankful to Arts Council OKC for allowing me to continue working during this time. I know um, some people have not been as fortunate, so I really appreciate um, them being flexible and being creative and taking the initiative to give me and other artists the um, opportunity to still share our art form and share our creativity with our students and with our audience base. Um, so I'm very grateful to them and I'm excited 
nervous but mostly excited for the weeks to come and how we can share dance with as many students as we possibly can. So that is it for me. I'm signing off. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and I will talk to you soon.